you can start sir so i need to share my screen is it uh... yes sir, you can share your screen by it's coming as, your uh, it's coming as disabled uh so now can you try it once yeah just a minute <clears throat> Uh, yes. Is it visible? Is it visible now? Is it visible? Yes, sir. So shall we start the session right now? I hope it's visible to everyone. Okay. So I welcome all of you for this uh, session on uh, developmental supportive care and kangaroo uh, mother care. So this is your uh, fourth week of your session as a part of your NNF uh, Shine program. So first we'll discuss about <clears throat> what is developmental supportive care and then we'll discuss about the kangaroo mother care. Developmental supportive care is nothing but an integrated approach comprising of certain do's and don'ts which are potentially beneficial to preterm units to help them cope up with the adverse external environment of the NICU. Means the baby which is there in utero is, is in a very comfortable state without much exposure to sound, noise or anything, light or anything. So as soon as the baby comes out, it is exposed to adverse external environment of the NICU. And this, there are certain do's and don'ts which we have to practice in order to potentially benefit these preterm units. And these set of practices are called as developmental supportive care. It's just an integrated approach of all these practices. <clears throat> so let us see what are the components of this developmental supportive care. These components are also called as core measures or core elements. So the first component is protected sleep, then you have what is called pain and stress assessment and management, developmental supportive activities of daily living, family-centered care, and a healing environment. So first we'll discuss about the <clears throat> protected sleep. So this is very important. You have to know these five components. Each component is very important. And these are also called as, as I told earlier, these are also called as core measures or core elements of DSC. Coming to... <clears throat> Protected sleep. Protected sleep is nothing but a <clears throat> totally undisturbed sleep state or a phase uh, in a baby. And it is during the sleep that the baby conserves energy. During sleep, there is no much activity. So there is conservation of energy. The baby gains weight maximum during the sleep. And also the brain growth is optimal during the sleep. Among all the phases in a baby's uh, life, it's during the sleep that the brain growth is maximum, that the synaptic connections and dendritic growth is maximum. So that is the importance of a sleep in a baby so how to promote the sleep so one can promote the sleep in the nsu by what is called facilitating tucking swaddling and skin to skin contact or what we call as kangaroo mother care honesting and swaddling so we will uh, see each one of them in the forthcoming slides facilitated tucking is nothing but keeping the baby in a lateral position you can see here the baby is in lateral position which slightly flexed and one arm of uh, one hand of the caregiver is at the head end and another hand is at the level of limbs. So this is one of the measure which is actually comfortable or uh, soothing uh, to the baby. And this is one measure which actually promotes sleep to the baby. So this is called as facilitated tucking. And <clears throat> another measure which promotes sleep is called swaddling. Swaddling is nothing but wrapping the baby in a cloth. We have to make sure that the both the upper limbs and lower limbs are in flexed position and upper limbs are in the midline at the level of the mouth. So this is called as swaddling and swaddling is another measure which has to be employed in the NICU to promote the sleep. <clears throat> Other important thing is all the non-emergent, the non-emergent caregiving procedures have to be performed when the baby is awake. If you want to do a sampling, if you want to change a pulse oximeter probe, if you want to change an orogastric tube or something like that, you have to do when the baby is awake and baby should not be disturbed when the baby is sleeping. And this is very important to promote the sleep. 
the other important component of uh, to maintain pro protected sleep is kangaroo mother care so kangaroo mother care we are going to discuss in detail at the end other thing to promote sleep is regarding the environment you have to make sure that the light and sound levels are <clears throat> minimized in the nicu and day and a night pattern should be simulated means you switch off the lights or keep the lights to bare minimum during the night time and also during the day time the lighting should be minimal and so that you stimulate the day and night pattern and focused lighting should be practiced <clears throat> then coming to the uh, minimizing the sound in an icu most important thing is you have to have an awareness first is you have to create awareness among all the healthcare givers including the doctors nurses about the importance to minimize the sound if you yourself don't have awareness then the this importance will not be well taken so it is very important first to create the awareness among all the healthcare professionals to reduce the sound in the nicu minimize the conversation in nicu if there is any discussion which needs to be done it should be away from the patient care area addressing the alarms in the nicu <clears throat> every <clears throat> electronic device in the nicu is capable of giving an alarm whether it's a radiant warmer whether it's an infusion pump whether it's a multi para monitor whether it's a humidifier whatever it is it can it's capable of giving an alarm and it and every alarm should be uh, you know addressed immediately and the proper alarm limit should be kept in the every equipment and in and also another important measure is you have to avoid the cross door talks so these are the measures which minimizes the sound and also protect the sleep so having known the importance of sleep the other <clears throat> component or the core measure of developmental supportive care is prevention and treatment of pain so in prevention and treatment of care first thing is clustering the care means you do many activities together for example if you want to change the diaper if you want to feed the baby at the same time you want to uh, you know change the uh, position of a pulse oximeter probe all of them should be you know clustered together so that uh, you don't handle the baby repeatedly <clears throat> so that is first thing <clears throat> and another thing is uh, most of the babies have adhesives for their uh, temperature probe or iv cannulas or anything like that these adhesives should be removed only when it has loosened from the skin surface and if at all if you want to remove any adhesive for for any other reason you have to make sure you moisten it well with normal saline and then you have to slowly remove from the skin surface so that the pain is very less and also parents must be educated regarding the pain every unit should have a documented unit protocol to assess the pain and also to manage the pain so this is also very important in prevention and treatment of the pain and one should use both non pharmacological measures and pharmacological measures to prevent the pain and also to manage the pain <clears throat> the third important component of uh, developmental supportive care is activities of daily living so these are the routine things which you do in uh, in the nursery every day so first thing is using boundaries to maintain the baby in a flexed pos posture in utero the baby is always in a universally flexion posture the upper limbs are flexed the lower limb also is flexed so you have to simulate that environment by using a boundary around the baby so that the baby is in a universal flexed posture baby should be you know handling should be very gentle and whenever the nurses change the diaper or whenever the diaper is changed it should be changed gently without lifting the legs most of the times you would have seen you know the baby's legs are lifted and the pelvis is also up and at the same time time the di diaper is replaced so this should not be done during the routine care <clears throat> and you have to make sure the baby's you know uh, handling is gentle uh, during every procedure in the nicu either it's during the sponging during the early morning time during weighing the baby lifting the baby to change the bed sheets or any other caregiving activities you have to maintain you have to support the baby's neck baby's whole body and the baby should be very gently handled so that the baby is doesn't undergo any stress and also it de decreases the risk of intraventricular hemorrhage and other activity of daily living is non nutritive sucking that is putting the baby on the empty breast to stimulate the sucking behavior and mother should be encouraged to participate in the activities of daily living such as feeding oil application and diaper change and also make sure the skin surface is protected during the application utilization and removal so <clears throat> coming to family centered care this is the fourth component of the developmental supportive care family centered care is also called as family participatory care it is nothing but involvement of mother father or any of the caregiver where 
they they are they have imparted uh, where they get certain skills and knowledge related to the baby care most of the <clears throat> western units they allow the mothers or any of the parents to come inside the nicu to participate in the care of the baby and in our country also most of the nicus do allow the mothers but some of the essentials or nicus they only allow the mothers as a visitors but not as a caregiver they just see the baby and the go but it is very important that the mother is involved in all the routine uh, care of the baby such as nesting swaddling breastfeeding facilitated tucking and all the other care activities of the baby so it is very important that you have to shift her role or uh, role of the mother from a visitor to a caregiver so these are the <clears throat> skills and knowledge which you have to uh, empower the mother or caregiver first is hand washing skills you have to teach the mother about the six steps of hand washing and importance of infection control and infection prevention should be taught uh, you know at the beginning itself at the time of admission itself and protocol for entry into the nursery where how where she should come where she should change the dress how where hand washing has to be done every the whatever, whatever protocol is there in the individual nursery it has to be told to the mother the developmental supportive care measures which we discussed just now has to be told and also importance of kangaroo mother care should be told and kangaroo mother care should be initiated and also the family participated care also helps in preparation for discharge and the care at the home how to take care of the baby also should be mentioned so this is what is about the family centered care the other component of developmental supportive care so you can see here <clears throat> in this uh, picture the mother is giving or uh, og feeding to the baby and here you can see the two mothers they are giving pelada feeds the father is giving kmc and there are many mothers who are giving kangaroo mother care so this is what is called as the family participatory care or family centered care that is involvement of parents in the care of the baby the fifth component of dac is nothing but the healing environment you have to <clears throat> we already discussed this in the a protected sleep section so you have to minimize the sound and light in the nicu do not use procedure light unnecessary to every time to examine the baby so you have to use only a general lighting instead of a procedure lighting and other thing is practice good care giving behavior such as adherence to infection control measure other important thing is uh, minimizing the sampling or any potentially harmful procedures such as uh, you know the, the iv pricks or a heel lance spray uh if if any procedure is not going to change the management of the baby then that procedure is not at all recommended it's not at all useful so you have to make sure you have to ask yourself whether this procedure is whether this procedure will change the clinical course or whether it will change the management of the baby and you have to promote healthy communication between the physician nurses and other professionals so this is the fifth component of developing development supportive care so developmental supportive care is not is a continuous process which starts from the birth and it has to be individualized for each patient it reduces stress it promotes the growth and it provides the much needed stimulation to the developing brain so in summary these are the five components which i just just discussed now one is protected sleep where you have to protect, uh, where you have to promote the sleep by you know by nesting swaddling facilitated tucking kangaroo mother care clustering of the activities minimizing the uh, sound and light in the nicu the other the second component which we discussed just now is prevention and treatment of the pain by uh, using both pharmacological and non pharmacological measures the yeah. third component is <clears throat> activities of daily living the fourth component was about the family centered care that is involving the family in the care of the baby and the fifth component was a healing environment which includes minimizing the sound and light maintaining asepsis and facilitating smooth transmission transition at the time of discharge so these are the five components or the five core elements of developmental supportive care which you should know now <clears throat> coming to the kangaroo mother care kangaroo mother care is also a part of developmental supportive care so the <clears throat> original concept of kangaroo mother care was first introduced by dr edgar ray in bogota colombia the main reason for uh, starting kangaroo mother care was because of the shortage of incubators and increased risk of infection in this unit so be, uh, because of this dr edgar ray started the kangaroo mother care and <clears throat> this was actually a cue from the nature if you see the kangaroo the kangaroos by default deliver preterm babies the gestational age of the kangaroo baby is one of, is very short it's about only about 28 to 34 days and it's one of the shortest in the animal kingdom once the baby kangaroo is born they they go into the pouch and the baby kangaroo stays in this pouch for about 8 months in inside the pouch there is a 
warmth environment and the baby kangaroo feeds inside this pouch and once the uh, and it grows inside the pouch and once it is uh, you know the uh, once it grows big enough then it comes out of the pouch in between in out and again goes inside the pouch to feed so this was a cue from the nature which was taken uh, by dr edgar ray and it was started for all the uh, preterm babies and low birth weight babies so let us see the <clears throat> uh, importance of kangaroo mother care kangaroo mother care comprises of two important components one is direct skin to skin contact between the baby and the mother or any of the healthcare or any of the healthcare provider and second thing is about the second component of kangaroo mother care is exclusive breastfeeding which babies are eligible for kmc any stable baby less than 2 kg should be a high priority for kangaroo mother care then when to start kmc all babies less than 2 kg which i just told now can are eligible for kmc <clears throat> in babies less than 1200 g they usually have some morbidities morbidities at in the first few days of life so once you can start uh, you can start kmc once the babies are stable in between 1.2 to 1.8 kg once the babies are sta stable of inotropes and or minimal respiratory support you can start kmc that somewhere it may take somewhere around 24 to 48 hours in babies more than 1.8 kg the kmc can be started in the labor room and it can be if uh, start and it can be continuously given most important thing to give kmc is that babies should be hemodynamically stable who can provide kmc the ideal person to provide kmc is mother <clears throat> but if mother is not available any trusted adult by the parent can give foster kmc it can be father it can be aunt it can be grandmother also it has to be uh, ensured that the same person continues kmc and the person should not have any infection during uh, if they are providing kmc what should be the duration of kmc this is the classification given by who uh, where the kangaroo mother care has to be you know has classified as has been classified as short extended long and continuous short means at least 4 hours daily extended kmc is 5 to 8 hours long means 9 to 12 hours daily Continuous KMC means more than 12 hours daily. KMC has to be documented on two consecutive days or more prior to discharge. That is at least uh, whatever the duration they are giving, they had, it has to be documented prior to discharge for at least two days. And duration of KMC, whatever is counted, it is the total cumulative number of hours during the 24 hour period. And one session, once the mother or father or any of the caregiver starts KMC, it has to be minimum for at least one hour. One session should last at least for one hour and it can extend uh, uh, how much ever hours they are comfortable. But at least once you start KMC, it should be for at least one hour. And total number of hours they give in the KMC will be counted as the cumulative hours and it has to be classified as short, extended, longer, continuous. One has to ensure that at least you give at least longer continuous KMC for every eligible baby. It is very important to <coughs> counsel the parents uh, for KMC. Counseling is the most important aspect uh, uh, to initiate the KMC and it's a very uh, the commonly used mnemonic for any counseling in the NICU is uh, GALP pack. G stands for greeting the pa patient the greeting the parent sorry you have to introduce yourself and you have to greet the parent ask her name and all and then second thing is asking asking how the mother is doing and if she has any medical problems or any infections and all then in G A L S, listening to all our queries and answer them if you, if there are any queries. Then P stands for praise, praising the mother for her involvement and willingness to give KMC. And A stands for advice and counsel her about the KMC. It is this is also very important. Here you have to tell the mother regarding the importance of KMC, yeah, about importance of bathing at least once a day if she is providing KMC, use of uh, hand rub and how to do hand washing and how the KMC is done, how long it should be given. At least you should tell if you start KMC, at least for one session should last for at least one hour, should not leave in between and go. And you know, the use of, uh, she can, you have to tell her that there is, there, there is, there need not be any separate or special clothing to give KMC, any cloth where the front uh, part is open, front dress is open. Uh, if, if that is the criteria, then if she can give the KMC. And once you advise the mother, the final step in GALPAC is C stands for confirm whether she has understood what you have told or not. And you, during the counseling of any parent or mother, you have to make sure that you stand, that you sit uh, uh, close to the mother. There should not be any barriers between the uh, 
between you, uh, between the counselor and the mother and make an eye contact. And these are the certain things which you have to follow during the counseling. Coming to requirements for KMC, <clears throat> the first thing is you have to train your nurses, physicians and other healthcare providers uh, for, about the importance of KMC. Educational material in local language such as sheets, posters and videos on KMC should be available so that the mother will know uh, even if the healthcare provider has not explained to her in detail. And a basic thing uh, about the requirement of about KMC is that you should have a reclining chair in the nursery in the postnatal wards or the bed should have an adjustable backrest and uh, in the postnatal wards. Mother's Regarding mother's clothing, KMC can be provided using any front open gown or any with any sari or blouse with shirt or shawl. The only thing is the front part should be open. With respect to baby's clothing, baby should be dressed with cap, socks, diaper and the front open clothing. The front part of the baby's uh, body also should be open so that there is direct skin to skin contact between the baby and the mother. So this is about the KMC position. You can see here the baby is, uh, you know, uh, lying between the uh, in the frog leg position, uh, where the baby is between the two mothers, between the breasts of the mother. Head is turned to one side, and baby's bottom is supported. At the same time, the nose and mouth are not covered. The face can be seen, and the head is in the sniffing position, and neck is not bent. Neck is straight and slightly extended. The shoulders are flat and they are touching the mom. The skin to skin contact is maintained. The mother is slightly upright. Mother should be slightly upright. She should not be lying completely flat on the bed or chair. And once this is ensured, both the, uh, the baby should be covered with a warm blanket and the mother is watching the baby. <clears throat> so <clears throat> when, K when the mother is doing KMC or when the, along with breastfeeding, there is multi-sensory stimulation to the baby. When the mother is when the uh, mother is giving KMC, the baby is seeing the mother. So there, there is some amount of visual stimulation. The baby smells the mother's milk. There is again a olfactory stimulation. There is some amount of uh, gustatory stimulation when the baby uh, feeds the mom's milk. And when the baby is touching the mother's skin, there is kinesthetic stimulation. And again during the skin to skin contact, there is a some stimulation. Again the baby's again the mother's uh, uh, arm on the baby's back will also cause some amount of stimulation and also when the baby hears the mother's voice there is some amount of auditory stimulation so kangaroo mother care and breastfeeding together is actually nothing nothing but a multi-sensory stimulation to the baby having known the importance of kmc and in the recent who uh, has uh, put it that the kangaroo mother care reduces the infant deaths by 40 percent the hypothermia is reduced by 70% and severe infections is reduced by 65%. This is one of the very simple cost-effective intervention to prevent the neonatal mortality rate. So kangaroo mother care, you can see here, almost deaths are reduced by 40%. Simple and very cost-effective intervention. So what are the benefits to the baby? As I told here, it provides the skin-to-skin -skin contact 24 hours, provide warmth to the baby. It prevents hypothermia. Mother is the natural incubator to the baby. Instead of staying in the incubator, the baby's skin-to-skin uh, -skin contact between the mother and baby is nothing but a natural incubator. There is physiological stability. There is less desaturations. There is less apnea. There is less oxygen requirement during KMC. As we saw, there is reduction in mortality by almost 40%. Earlier growth spurt, because of reduction of hypothermia, the babies gain weight faster. And also, the babies will have better IQ when you follow them in a the long term. There is increased alertness and the more sleep is promoted and also the KMC reduces the infection and as we saw there is multimodal or multi-sensory stimulation during the kangaroo mother care. So these are the numerous benefits uh, of KMC to the baby. Let us see what are the benefits to the mother. K kangaroo mother care in, you know, improves the self-confidence in the mother, it establishes successful breastfeeding, the breast milk output is improved in the mother and at the same time it improves the bonding between the mother and the baby there is also an improvement or you know the satisfaction to the baby since there is uh, and also since the baby gains weight faster there is less infection there is less hypothermia these babies are discharged faster and there is also reduction in the hospital stay and benefits to the family it's a healthier baby the breastfeeding rate is improved the breastfeeding is more success 
there is less risk of child abuse and abandonment the babies have a better iq there is increased follow up the father returns to work earlier it saves money so these are, so you so the, there are multiple benefits to baby mother and also to the family kmc can be provided even when the mother is ambulatory need not that mother should always be lying on a kmc chair you can see here the mother is doing her daily activity at the same time the uh, you know the baby's uh, uh, kmc is being provided and for this you can use what is called as the commercially available binders are available through which the kmc can be given what monitoring should be <clears throat> done during the kmc check the baby every 15 minutes for the first two hours while the baby remains in the skin to skin contact first is you have to check the activity of the baby whether it is normal or abnormal whether it is decreased activity or not you count the respiration and breathing by number of breaths per minute see the color of the baby baby should have a pink lips and tongue and or else if you have a facility of pulse oximetry monitoring you should have you should see the saturation in the pulse oximeter and make sure the baby is warm and measure the temperature with a digital thermometer baby should have a normal temperature between 36.5 to 37.5 degrees and position of the neck needs to be monitored this is very very important the neck should not be flexed if it flex the baby may go into an apnea because of neck obstruction and it is very important you teach all this a b c t to the mother about the activity breathing color and temperature so coming to discharge criteria when the baby is undergoing kmc the baby should be able to <clears throat> uh maintain normal temperature the baby should uh, be having a uh, baby should be feeding by pellet or breast feeding and gaining at least 15 to 20 gra gram per kg per day there should not be any acute problems mother should be confident of taking care of the baby this is the most important thing the confidence of the mother to take care of the baby in the home is one of the very important discharge criteria the baby's gestational age should be more than 34 weeks or more than 1.4 kg and mother should be giving at least 8 hours of kmc for at least three consecutive days these are the discharge criteria which one needs to follow at the time of discharge in summary kangaroo mother care improves neonatal survival early initiation of kmc promotes improved breastfeeding and also prevents hypoglycemia foster kmc and ambulatory kmc that is foster kmc means kmc which can be provided by any other family member or ambulatory kmc is the kmc during the uh, i mean not not only during lying position and during activities is also a very good option and it increases the total duration of kmc thank you if there are any queries doubts or anything please uh, uh, mention in the chat box If there are any queries, questions or anything, please uh, do mention in the chat box. Uh, the first question is, uh, if the mother is having fever, can she give KMC? If the mother is having uh, active infection, uh, better not to give KMC. Uh, that is what we uh, told in the gal pack. Uh, that is, you have to ask the mother during counseling whether she has any active infection, especially respiratory infections. So better not to give KMC during that time. But she can definitely express the milk and continue breastfeeding. She can also give KMC uh, if she is able to, uh, you know, uh, maintain with a proper uh, hand hygiene and if she can wear a mask, she can also give. But if it's a very extremely low birth weight baby and she, she has a very active infection, then it's not uh, ideal to give. 
KMC can be stopped once the baby reaches around uh, uh, more than uh, 2.5 kgs. Any other questions? Yeah, uh, any role of oromotor stimulation in developmental supportive care? It is it is not in a core component of uh, developmental supportive care, but yeah, it can be a part of a uh, routine care in a pre, any preterm baby to facilitate a faster uh, transition from uh, OG feeds to pelada feeds and from pelada to breastfeeding. So it it can be considered as a part of routine care. So the other question is any positioning checklist, any pain assessment scales. Uh, there are multiple pain assessment scales uh, available, uh, very well uh, tested pain assessment scales such as uh, premature infant pain profile and neonatal facial coding system. And uh, there are many other uh, pain assessment scales. So uh, whichever your unit uh, is being uh, used, you can use any of them. Or neonatal facial coding system. There are many other uh, cries there are many pain assessment scales which uh, are there av available. Any of them you can use. Can anyone summarize the components of uh, developmental supportive care, the five core components? Anyone answer the five components of developmental supportive care, which we just uh, thought? <clears throat> yes, first is protected sleep, then pain prevention. Yes, prevention and treatment of pain. Third component is activities of daily living. Yes. Then family-centered care, yes, very good. Involvement of uh, family in the routine care of the baby. Fifth is a healing environment, yes. So these are the five components or core elements of developmental supportive care, which you should know. <laughs> okay, then uh, in the, how do you ensure the baby has a protected sleep? Or how, you, how do you promote the sleep in a baby? What are the measures I told? I mean, how can you do that? Yeah, it should be totally undisturbed sleep for the baby. Then uh, how do you promote that sleep? Yeah, one is nesting, swaddling, facilitated tucking, swaddling, then clustering of the care, kangaroo mother care, prevention of uh, excessive light and sound in the NICU, use of there is a question any apps to measure the sound in the nsu uh, you there are many apps available in the i mean you can download from the uh, play store or app store there are available uh, apps which you can measure but they are not very accurate 
but there are commercially available devices through which you can measure the uh, decibels in the uh, nicu there are commercially available decibel uh, meters way through which you can actually see the measure the sound in the nicu otherwise you have a mobile apps which you can keep inside the nicu and measure the sound level any other question or query <clears throat> okay regarding the kangaroo mother care uh, which all babies are eligible oh. what is the cut weight cut off which i told less than 1200 someone has written if for example if baby is 1.5 kg will you give or not any baby less than 2 kgs you can give i mean we classified uh, less than 1200 1200 1200 and told that like that way but any baby less than 2 kg you have to start the kmc who mentioned that less than one less than 2.5 kg but at least for less than 2 kg babies you have to initiate kmc so regarding the kmc what are the benefits of kmc Can anyone tell what are the benefits? <clears throat> yes, one is it promotes weight gain. It promotes weight gain mainly by reducing the hypothermia, decreasing the infections, increasing the breast milk production. Okay. Any other benefits of KMC? One has answered weight gain, one has answered temperature, breastfeeding, emotional bonding, yes, bonding between the mother and the baby. Okay. By how much percent kangaroo mother care reduces the neonatal mortality? Yes, by almost it reduces neonatal mortality by someone has written 40, someone has written 70. It reduces deaths by 40% and sepsis by 65% and hypothermia by 70%. So reduction in mortality is by almost 40%. It reduces neonatal deaths by 40%. Infections by almost 65 and hypothermia by almost 70%. So it is one of the very simple cost-effective intervention in reduction of the neonatal mortality. <clears throat> I uh, discussed about GALPAC, uh, you know, during counseling of, uh, uh, during, I mean, to counsel the mother for KMC. Can anyone uh, enumerate what all you do in a gal pack? First step, what you do? G stands for? G stands for? Greet the, greet the patient. Yes. Then A stands for ah. ask her about any issues or anything. Then if she has any... As a resident L stands for? Listen to her. The most important part of counseling is you have to be a very patient listener, right? Listen to her, listen to her queries and all. Then third thing is L over. Then P stands for praise, praise the mother. You know, she's you nine, know, six, five, five, two, zero, seven. Can, can you please mute zero, double, seven, zero, three. Can admin mute all of them? Okay. Praise. A is advice. You have to give advice how to give KMC, importance uh -huh. of KMC, how it needs to be in everything. And C stands for confirm whether she has understood whatever you have told or not. So th these are the steps which in the GAL pack which you have to follow. Okay. Then <clears throat> with respect to the uh, different uh, duration of KMC, how do you classify KMC? Short, extended, continuous, long. Short is how many hours per day? At least, at least of. Nine. 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 
Long stands for at least nine to twelve hours per day. Extend it for at least five to eight hours. Continuous is more than twelve hours. Okay, most of you have answered. <clears throat> Then about the uh, KMC position. What are the important things in uh, while you know giving position uh, during KMC? Where should be baby placed? Baby should be placed uh, not on the abdomen. It should be yeah. Uh, it should be between the mother's breasts. Baby should be between at least on the chest between the mother's breasts. Head should be turned to one side. baby should be having a in a baby should be in a frog like position and baby's bottom should be supported and what should be the position of the neck it should be flexed or extended what should be the position of the neck someone has written neck should be flexed neck should not be flexed if you flex the neck the baby will end up with obstructive apnea neck should be straight or slightly extended slightly neck should be in a slightly extended position uh, never keep the baby's neck flexed then neck should be slightly you know uh, straight and it should be mildly extended it should not be this thing shoulders yes shoulders should be flat and there should be direct skin to skin contact between the baby's uh, chest and the mother's chest right and baby should be uh what all clothes baby should be wearing baby should be having a cap socks it for both the hands and lower limbs and one diaper cap and mittens yes <clears throat> okay okay if there are no other questions we will uh, in the session if there are any queries please uh, in the, write in the chat box otherwise we'll stop okay we'll stop we'll end the session thank you सोलो बार बार में सर